This is the Daily Pulse from Speak My Word Ministries. I'm Travis Zimmerman. We're on a series here on the lessons God taught us on an extended nationwide RV trip. And the block we're in right now is all the lessons we learned specifically in Las Vegas. We talked yesterday about God has compassion for sinners and the compassion for us. But that patience for sin wears out. God is holy. He's the opposite of sin. And he does not, you know, for us it may seem like thousands of years God's putting up with us as sinful beings. But there are multiple examples in the Bible where God finally says, that's it. That's it. I'm going to go to one of the first ones. And this is Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, probably I would argue the first one is when, when Adam and Eve sinned, they were cast out of the garden. Yeah, that was it. Here's on a broader scale, a whole city, two cities that have fallen into sin. So just as God is compassionate for sinners, he cannot be mocked. And I go simply now to the book of Genesis, chapter 19, in its entirety. Sodom and Gomorrah destroyed. The two angels arrived at Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gateway of the city. When he saw them, he got up to meet them and bowed down with his face to the ground. My lords, he said, please turn aside to your servant's house. You can wash your feet and spend the night and then go on your way early in the morning. No, they answered, we will spend the night in the square. But Lot insisted so strongly that they did go with him and entered his house. He prepared a meal for them, baking bread without yeast, and they ate. Before they had gone to bed, all the men from every part of the city of Sodom, both young and old, surrounded the house. They called to Lot, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us so that we can have sex with them. Lot went outside to meet them and shut the door behind him and said, No, my friends, don't do this wicked thing. Look, I have two daughters who have never slept with a man. Let me bring them out to you, and you can do with them what you like. But don't do anything to these men, for they have come under the roof, under my protection of my roof. Get out of our way, they replied. And they said, this fellow came here as an alien, and now he wants to play the judge. We'll treat you worse than them. They kept bringing pressure on Lot and moved forward to break down the door. But the men inside reached out and pulled Lot back into the house and shut the door. Then they struck the men who were at the door of the house, young and old, with blindness, so that they could not find the door. The two men said to Lot, Do you have anyone else here, sons-in-law, sons or daughters, or anyone else in the city who belongs to you? Get them out of here, because we are going to destroy this place. The outcry to the Lord against its people is so great that he has sent us to destroy it. So Lot went out and spoke to his sons-in-law, who were pledged to be married, to pledge to marry his daughters. He said, Hurry and get out of this place, because the Lord is about to destroy the city. But his sons-in-law thought he was joking. With the coming of the dawn, the angels urged Lot, saying, Hurry, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, or you will be swept away when the city is punished. When he hesitated, the men grasped his hand and the hands of his wife and of his two daughters and led them safely out of the city, for the Lord was merciful to them. As soon as they had brought them out, one of them said, Flee for your lives. Don't look back and don't stop anywhere in the plain. Flee to the mountains or you will be swept away. But Lot said to them, No, my lords, please. Your servant has found favor in your eyes and you have shown great kindness to me in sparing my life. But I can't flee to the mountains. This disaster will overtake me and I'll die. Look, here is a town near enough to run to and it is small. Let me flee to it. It is very small, isn't it? Then my life will be spared. He said to them, he said to him, very well, I will grant this request too. I will not overthrow the town you speak of, but flee there quickly because I cannot do anything until you reach it. That is why this place was called Zoar. By the time Lot reached Zoar, the sun had raised over the land, had risen over the land. Then the Lord rained down burning sulfur on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. Thus he overthrew those cities and the entire plain, including all those living in the cities, and also the vegetation and the land. But Lot's wife looked back, and she became a pillar of salt. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and returned to the place where he had stood before the Lord. He looked down toward Sodom and Gomorrah, toward all the land of the plain, and he saw dense smoke rising from the land, 
like smoke from a furnace. So when God destroyed the cities of the plain, he remembered Abraham, and he brought Lot out of the catastrophe that overthrew the cities where Lot had lived. Genesis chapter 19, verses 1 through 29, the entirety of Genesis 19. So the, the parallel I'm making is, again, Vegas is just a symbol of that. You know, all of us are sinners. It's, it's, it seems to be concentrated in places like Las Vegas. Yes, God does have compassion for sinners, but God cannot be mocked, and he won't be mocked. He knows all that goes on, everything that goes on. There's nothing that it, it gets by him. Sin we will must pay for. And for those of us, by God's grace, who, who, who call on the name of Jesus Christ, those sins have been paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ. So for, for those who don't, it's, it's, it's impinged upon us. It's our duty to pray for them. Not out of pity or because we're somehow higher than they are. We are sinners. All of us sinners. And those who know Jesus are saved by his grace. So God's patience will run out just as it ran out with Sodom and Gomorrah for the evil acts they were committing. It will run out for us on earth. And that's not a boogeyman speech. That's not a you know, freak you out kind of speech. It's just a reality. And it's also a chance to, to leave our sin behind and cling to Jesus. Because when the destruction comes, we want to be with him and away from this earth, which is going to be destroyed. He will create a new heaven and a new earth. We know this. But God does not tolerate sin. Jesus, thank you for your mercy and your name. Amen.